Welcome back. We are just done with the user management of the app. So we are able to log in a new user. We've done the loading page. We've done the login page. We've done the register page. So we can register a new user. We can log in a user. We can keep the user logged in. And we can also log out the user. So this we've done now in the previous video. So our user management at this stage is working 100%. Now, the last page that we need to work on here, we've done loading, login, and register. We need to work on the to-do page. So for the to-do page, there's a few things that's happening on the screen. So nothing is currently working except for this logout button. That's part of the user management. So if we look at this, we've got a plus there that creates a new to-do. We've got a save button, and we've got a refresh button. For this to do also, you can delete a to do and you can change this to do. So we can create a new to do here. We can delete the to do and we can change it by clicking on this checkbox and it will make a tick there. Now, if we go to Visual Studio Code and we look at the to do service now, you will see that we've got a create to do function there that we need to code. There's a delete to do, there's a toggle to do done. So these three create to do will happen here. The delete to do will happen there when we click on delete. And the toggle to do done will happen when we click on this checkbox. So those three you can see does not return back some sort of future value, which means these three will actually not save directly to backenders. So if we're going to use some sort of variable inside of this to do service, that provider will help me to keep track of any to do's that we create, the to do's that we delete, and the to-dos that will be changing for the specific user. Then you can see that we've got a get to-dos function that will be asynchronous. So this we will actually go and get the to-dos from backenders. Uh, the save to-do entry will be linked to this refresh button and that refresh button will then call this save to-do entry function and this will save the new to-do entry. Now just remember that a to-do entry is currently what we have in backenders for this to-do entry. So for every new entry we have in the database here for the to-do entry, we have got to-dos, a username. And that's basically all we are interested in currently. So there's a list of to-dos or a map of to-dos. But if we're going to place them in here, we will have the first to-do as position number zero and then one and then two. So we can think of them as a list. So just to point you back to this field here inside of backenders that is called to-dos. It will be of type JSON or uh, a map in Flutter, and currently they are empty. So when we click on the refresh button here, it will basically come and retrieve the data for that specific person. Now let's go back to to-do service. So what we're going to do for now is just to code this create to-do, delete to-do, and toggle to-do done, and then we'll come back to create get to do's and save to do entry. So when the app first starts, it will start at the loading screen. The loading screen will call this init dot dot. Inside of init dot dot, we check whether the user is already logged in. If the user is not logged in, we take him to the login screen and he can log in. If he is already logged in, we take him to this page. Okay, so as part of that, we will call this get to do's. So this get to do's will then go for the specific user that was logged in. Remember, we're passing in the username here. So for that user that's logged in, we will get the to do's. And then we will set those to do's to a variable that we're going to create now in this to do service. But if we want to, we can also come and click on this refresh button in the UI to also do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to start off by just removing this Boolean value here. We will actually not be using it, so you can delete that Boolean value. So we will just be sending through the username. Right, so let's create a few values that we're going to use here. Okay, so I'm going to make this one a bit bigger. I'm going to refer back to back in this a bit, so I'm just going to keep it open like this. Right, so at the top, one thing that we need to have is to get this to-do entry back from the database. So... Remember, everything coming back from backenders can contain null values, so it must be nullable. And this is going to be our to-do entry. And because it's nullable, uh, you don't need to initialize it. Okay, we're not going to do a get or anything for that. It's just to keep it inside of this class. Uh, we will also not provide it anywhere. We will just get that to-do entry, and we're going to use it in both get-to-dos and save-to-do entry. Another thing that we want to get from this to-do entry 
So if you have a look at your to-do entry, we want to get the list of to-dos because this list of to-dos we want to show you. So that is why I also need to have access to that. So I'm going to have a list of to-do objects and let's call them to-dos. And for this one, it's not nullable, so I will initialize it with an empty list. And for this, I will also need to have a getter so that we can provide this somewhere later on. So get to-dos and we're just going to get back this to-dos. And if the user wants to log out and we want to maybe empty this or set it back to its initial state again, we can just call a function called empty to-dos. And this one will set our to-dos equal to an empty list again, and we can notify the listeners. So just to recap again, we're going to get this to-do entry from the database. From that to-do entry, we will get the list of to-dos, and that list of to-dos is what we're going to show you. So at the top, obviously, we'll need this to-do entry to get the username. So there's the username and maybe get some info of that user and show the user there. Okay, so, uh, we got the list of to-dos, we can get them back and we can empty them again. Right, something we'll also need in the user interface will be to show whether it is busy retrieving some data. So let's say busy retrieving and we're going to set that to false initially and also busy saving. So we will be retrieving and saving data from backenders. Okay, so we just want to show a progress bar for both those. For both of them, we'll need a getter. So I'm going to say bool get busy retrieving. And that will just send back the busy retrieving. And we'll also have a bool get busy saving. And we will be returned back busy saving. Right, so that's basically all variables that we will be using here is to get the entry. From the entry, we will get the list of to-dos. We can empty those to-dos and get them back. We've got two Booleans to show whether we are now retrieving or saving and getting them back. Okay, so what I want to start with is creating a new to-do. So in order to create a new to-do, the user will click on this plus sign. He will enter the to-do and he will save. So what we want to do here is to go to this to-dos that we will have at the top. And remember, we will get this from back in this. So this to-dos will actually have either an empty list. If there's nothing in back in this, it will still be empty. But if there is something, it will be contained in this list of to-dos. So then we will go to that list of to-dos and we will insert. And because I want the newest elements of the to-dos right at the top, I'm going to keep on inserting at position zero at the top of the list and I will be inserting this new to-do. So we're going to call create to-do, pass in the new to-do that we got from here. So here we create the to-do, that to-do gets passed in, and we insert it into the to-dos list. We will then notify all the listeners so that our list in the UI gets updated with the new value. Now let's look at to delete a to-do. So for this one, we're just going to go to to-dos. We're going to call the remove function, and we pass in the value to remove. And it's this to do that we're going to pass in. So if we want to delete this one, we will just click on that button and it will pass in the new to do that we need to remove and it will remove it from the list. We will call notify listeners to update our UI again. Then in the toggle to do done, what we want to do here, you can see we're passing in an index. Where is the value inside of the list that we want to toggle? So for this one, we will go to to-dos, go to the specific index in the to-do where we want to make the change. We refer to the done property and we will set that property to not done. So that will again be going to to-dos, going to the index, going to done. Okay, so if we remember again how the to-dos look, a to-do will have a title whether it's done or not and a date and a time it was created. So when we click on here and we create a new to-do, what will happen? We just want the title because the title we can then enter there. Done will then obviously be false. So that be set automatically. And the date and time created, we get from the system. So all we need is the title there. Okay, so when we're creating the new to-do in here, when we create the new to-do, it will be false. The time it was created will be there, but we only asked for the title. 
So when we toggle it, remember it could already been toggled before. So for that specific to do in the index, we go to the done value and we change it to not the previous value. So if it was false previously, not false will now become true and not true will become false. So we're just changing it. Again, we need to update the user interface. So I'm going to say notify listeners. Right, so now we can go to the helper to do. And the only one I want to complete right now is to create a new to do in the UI. And you can see in this uh, helper to do, I do not have uh, one for, let me just go to user service again, for toggle the to do or deleting the to do. Because if you delete, I just want to remove it from the list. I do not want to even ask the user, are you sure? And also when they click it, it must just change. Okay, so the only one that needs maybe a bit more is when we create something here. So let's go to the helper class, which is the helper to do, and we're going to create the new to do in UI. Okay, so we're going to pass in the title controller because we only need the title. Right, so I'm going to start off and say, well, or if the title controller dot text dot is empty, if the text is empty in the UI, I will show a snack bar and the message will be, please enter a to do first, then save. Okay, and then the else part here will be then, well, we've got some title there and we can add this now. So now I need to create a new to do. So in order to create a new to-do, just go to the to-do service and save this one here. Let's go to to-do quickly. In order to create a new to-do, I need a title. So we've got that from the text editing controller. Done will be set to false and the date time will be set to now. So it's quite easy to create. So we're gonna say to-do, to-do. Let me just say, let me import this one, to-do. Uh, to-do equals a new to-do. Now we need a title and we will get the title from this title controller dot text and remember you can trim it. The date it was created is very easy to do also. Remember if you hover over it, that is a date time object. So we're going to go to the date time class and in that class there's a now function. And that creates the date and the time for me at this specific stage in time. Okay, so that will create the new date for me. And you can see if we hover over to to do, automatically it will be set to false. So you don't need to set it to false. I just put a comma there at the end and then we got it nicely formatted. Okay, so we created a new to do. So now we need to send that to do to the list. But let's say we do not want to have duplicates in the list. So then we can do the following. If, and you can see we passed in the context and in order for provider to help us out here, let's just add the import quickly. So I'm going to say provider and you can see it added at the top. Okay. So now for provider to work, that will should work now. So I'm going to say context.read. Where do we want to read the data from? Well, it will be the to-do service and I will go to the to-dos field. So that's the getter calling the getter. And I'm going to call contains this to do that we just created. Okay, so if there's something in the list that's already this to do, and if you have a look at your to dos, how are we comparing? We are just looking at the title. So in your double equal sign operator here, we are just comparing the title and the title there. So that is how it will compare when you use this contains. We will just be looking at the title. So if there's two titles that's exactly the same, we will show the snack bar and the message will just be duplicate value. Please put a full stop there. Please try again. Right, the else is there is no such to do with that specific title and then we can add it. So I'm going to set the title controller's text to be empty. So when you click there again, there won't be text in that title controller. So if you click there, you can see it will still have the title of the previous one if you do not clear it. And that's why I accept the title controller here so that we can clear the text. Okay. And then we're going to go to context again, dot read. Again, we're going to read from the to do service. 
And inside of that class, we need to call create to do. So we want to create a new to do, and we pass in the to do that we created there. So we created the to do. We know it's not a duplicate, so we create it, we add it. And then we can call navigator dot pop, pass in the context. So when you are done and you click on save and the title is there, it will close down this dialog and then we will have the new to do. Right, you can save this and we are done for this one. Right, that's it for this video. So in the next video, we will then go on and maybe change the save to do entry, go into the helper and save all to do's. And the video after that, we will have a look at getting the to do's, going to the helper and refreshing the to do's in the UI. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.